So previously we've made games in both Discord and Twitter, and while we've only made one game in Twitter, making more accounts to make more bots is just not the easiest thing in the world, so I think I'm just going to move on from that. With that being said, we're going to move on to our next challenge, and that is we've been using these platforms that aren't really meant for games to make games, but what if we went very meta and like made a game inside of a game? And if you've read the title or seen the thumbnail, you can probably guess it. Yes, we're going to be using Minecraft as our game engine to make other games. And to start it off, we're going to do Brick Breaker. Now, if you don't know me very well outside of Twitch and YouTube, I actually started to learn programming by making Minecraft plugins. And ever since then, I have been making Minecraft plugins and then now more recently mods for quite a while now. So Minecraft is a game that I'm pretty well versed in developing just tools and just developing stuff in. So it's gonna be very fun to go back to doing that and making these games and kind of incorporating what we've been doing in the past videos into here and just bringing it all together. Now, first things first, because I want this to be kind of a standalone plugin, standalone system, we need to have the world be nothing. We need a giant void world. Basically, we don't want anything there because we want to have full control of the games, full control of the world. There's not, we're not playing real Minecraft in this. We're playing games inside of Minecraft. So the first thing to do was to make a void world. We programmed it in and after a failed attempt where we didn't have anything to stand on when we spawned in, we had the void world all set up, bedrock below you. This is going to be our main spawn on this uh, plugin and server. Next up, because this is going to be basically a Minecraft list server, if that makes sense, there is going to be no movement needed. You're going to basically be standing there and there's no point to have additional movement. This is mainly done by setting the player's movement speed to zero and also canceling out some move events. But in the end, basically you're stuck in a place, you can still look around, type in chat, do all that stuff, but you can't really move anywhere because again, on the spawn at least, there's no really sense to allow the player to move around because again, it's just a game server, you're not actually playing Minecraft. But at any rate, now that that's complete, we need to still continue on with the core code, which is now to move on to the whole game manager, which is going to be the entire class that is containing, managing, and setting up all of the games and the players and what state they're in and just managing all of that. So a fair amount of work initially was spent doing that and getting that all set up to be used so that we can then move on to making our Brick Breaker game. Now with that being said, as in the past videos, a lot of this was done live on my Twitch page, twitch.tv slash trickdev. Definitely go give me a follow there. It's been a very fun time making this and I will be continuing making this as well as all future games on there, so definitely give me a follow there. But anyways, on to making Brick Breaker in Minecraft. Now, this video might be a little longer, mainly because it's going to be a lot of just initial setup stuff. Uh, I do plan to make more games than just Brick Breaker in the future. I've actually already started on the next one after this, but a lot of this video is going to be mainly just kind of initial setup and just core components that will be shared across a lot of games. So, sorry this one is kind of a bit longer than the normal ones, but I can rest assured We'll be making a bunch of these games, so a lot of this work we're doing now will benefit us later on. So after adding a play and leave command, that way we can also start and stop games, the first thing to do was to play around with the mouse and the player's looking location to control an armor stand which will down the line become our paddle for a Brick Breaker game. Now I know this could have also been done through using the regular movement keys in the game, just WASD, and I do plan to try and use them down the line, but for this game I felt like just starting with this, just playing around something, I don't know, there wasn't really a reason for this, it could have been any other way, but this is just what we ended up doing. So now with the initial concept of our paddle done, the next step is to actually create our game board and our playing surface. So we first started off with just a very blank black background that we can use as our kind of our main canvas and then from there we ended up adding back our paddle that is the armor stand and also including some bricks that we put at the top of the game board. So we have the game board but to be honest the armor stand just isn't cutting it for me as a paddle. It doesn't really look like a paddle. So the next step was to try and figure out the best way to make it look like a paddle. Now I tried a bunch of different stuff between having the armor stand hold items just being in different ways and we couldn't quite get anything we liked. And then we tried some other entities and in the end the best one that ended up working was a minecart. This one had the kind of shape of a paddle and in the end we could string most of them together to make it wider, make it shorter so it actually fit pretty well and was overall pretty happy. We did have a small bug where it picked up our slime that we ended up using as our ball but we can cancel out that event of the slime going into the minecart, prevent that from happening 
and in the end it's actually all looking pretty good. So now that we have our ball and our panel made up of minecarts, although kind of jankily, it is now time to move on to making the ball move around, bounce around the map, collide with the bricks, and eventually break them. So initially for all the collision detection and just kind of movement of the ball in the physics of the game, I was going to just make an internal game that handled all that in an update or tick loop and then just kind of represented it in visually in the game and just have it be done that way is it'd be the easiest. But after this happened on stream, it gave me the idea and trying to stay true to using Minecraft as our game engine, I decided to end up using Minecraft's collision detection, in this case the slime going into the block and taking damage, as our way to detect the collision and then use that to then change the ball's direction or to get the brick was hit or just do anything for that collision. Definitely the harder route, yes, but again, this project isn't meant to be the taking the easy route or doing anything normally. It's about having fun and also just doing things differently, in which case I think this totally fits what we're doing of just doing really weird things but using this base game in whatever way we can to then make our game. So in order for this collision detection to work we have to listen to the entity damage by block event which is given to us by Bucket. This essentially just gives us the collision detection all done in for us here. So now by listening to this event, cancelling it out which also will cancel the damage that is dealt by this event, we can then now know when the slime interacts with any of the bricks or in this case also the walls which we'll use later to make the the slime bounce around the map, but we can use this as our base for knowing where we collided with and knowing when we collided. So now that we've cancelled the event, we can simply see the slime passing through every block because while well, we've cancelled it, we've cancelled the collision detection and therefore the damage, so the slime will simply just move forever. But once we handle that collision that we are getting from the event, we can now bounce off the bricks and correctly damage them and change their color and state. So now that we've got the vertical motion and collision detection working, it is time to move on to the horizontal. That starts with first doing some math to figure out how the slime's x velocity should change depending on how you hit the paddle, because of course as you hit the ends, it's going to send the ball off kind of more variance, whereas if you hit more to the middle, it's going to send it off more as a complementary angle of how I hit the paddle. But after doing some math, we get first a false start to where things just break down and no collision happens. But after some code tweaking, we get the whole system working to where the ball is bouncing around the map, changing angles in the X, and bouncing off the paddle, off the walls, and off the bricks, and more importantly, breaking the bricks as it does it. And with that being said, we now have the core playable concept Brick Breaker complete. We can bounce the ball around, we can break bricks, and in theory, we could finish and clear out the map. And while we might have the core concept of the game, we are still far from done as we still have lots of cosmetics, lots of smaller things to do, and of course you can see there, lots of bugs and just things to fix out and flesh out. The first of these cosmetics is going to be holograms. Now if you're familiar with Bucket and server management, you'll know that there is a plugin that does holograms. I'm going to be using this in sort of a very similar way, which is basically there is going to be text in the world that'll be, in this case for Brick Breaker, displaying the level, the score, and your lives that you've left. But essentially what holograms are is they're going to be armor stands which have a name tag on them of whatever you want it to be, but then the armor stand is invisible, so all you see is the name tag and just kind of floating text in the world. These are very nice just to have in-world text, nice and clean, and display information that is not necessarily locked onto your HUD and in the action bar and all that type of stuff. In game these holograms will look a bit like this where we have the text lives there with three hearts to represent how many lives you have left and we will also implement this in for Brick Breaker here for the score as well as the level that you are currently on. Next up sort of cosmetically I wanted to have the levels or the pattern the bricks are in per level be dynamically loaded from a file. Now currently I just have a very basic example bricks you've been seeing through the video so far of just those color patterns and they're all been just stored in this two-dimensional list or uh, blocks array here. I wanted to move this over to a file just because then it's not all loaded in code all the time but just because it's easier for me to have JSON code there than to try and do what I'm doing here which is a list of two-dimensional integer arrays which just got really complex and just it did, didn't look very good. File loading this was definitely a good option and down the line if I really wanted to I could also add in the option to where these are loaded from the web that way I could define levels without you then having to update the plugin just for new levels. Uh, for now I only have like five or so levels but as time goes I'm sure I'll add more. So at this point in the plugin, we now have a system set up to where one, you where you jump to start the level, so you jump, the ball will then be released from your paddle. 
We also have the lives displayed on the left, the level displayed on the right, and when you clear out a level, when you clear out all the bricks, this is level 1 here, so when you clear out these remaining 3 bricks, it will automatically advance to the next level, and of course if you miss the slime, you will now lose a life, and the slime will then be given back to your paddle, and will start over to where you can jump again to release the ball. One of the last sort of game features I wanted to implement was perks or the power-ups. So of course, it being displayed here, you'll see a falling silverfish. This is displaying the power-ups as they fall down. In this case, I was going to first test out the kind of sticky paddle here, which when it, the ball collided with the piston or the paddle, it would pick up the ball, hold it, and then you have to re-jump to let go of it. And it was all working pretty good. But this is where my bad coding when I started this project out and just not correctly planning for the game inside of Minecraft and how this is all going to work really came back to bite me as things just were not easy to do. It was very annoying to do some of this stuff. Um, and in me, in my infinite wisdom, I decided I think we should just recode a lot of the base location stuff now. Realistically though, this actually was the time to do this, was the time to recode this. Uh, because this is going to be the base code for a lot of the future games, might as well do it right now, then regret it later. So, the issue right now is the fact of how I constructed this kind of game here, and how I'm translating from the Minecraft three-dimensional worlds to the two-dimensional coordinates of our game. See, because Minecraft's a three-dimensional game, but our Brick Breaker game here is two dimensions, I have to convert the world, Minecraft world space and translate it into two dimensions, mainly for collision detection, but also for rendering stuff, so that way they appear in the correct locations, even though there are two dimensions and three. It's, it's a whole other thing ordeal. Anyways, so the biggest issue here is the way I centered the game, or the 0, zero location. 0, 0 is actually at the player. The player is standing at 0, 0. Think of it on the map. So the X sort of horizontal X0 is here on the map to where the paddle is actually below 0. And the Y um, line here is right at the middle to where you have on the left side a negative X and the right side a positive X. This is an issue as well because the map or the Minecraft three-dimensional coordinates are actually going the opposite way. We have the positive axis on the left and the negative axis on the right, so where if you're going up in axis, it's actually reversed to what's on the game board, and that's all confusing too. Either way, it was it was just badly done. So the way we fixed this in the end was to take this and shift everything differently. We made 0, 0 be at the bottom left of the game board, where you would think to be, and we simply translated that from the player to there, that way, now everything is in relevant reference to the bottom left of the game board, and everything is now correctly aligned based upon that, which makes much, much more sense, and we can now translate between these two coordinates much easier. So now that our world coordinates can be converted and moved about easily, it's time to move back into doing the power-ups. The first of which, again, was the sticky paddle. We were doing this by simply, or we were representing this with a paddle or the minecarts here holding slime blocks inside of them. However, this seemed to bring up another issue that was also kind of very interesting to see on the first time, but we found out there's a lot of logic that's actually done on the client side for how the minecarts here move and how they are updated and not a lot of it, or there's a lot of interpolation that's done. We fix this, however, by simply just locking them in in their XZ coordinates and locking them in in the rotation. That fixed this bug, but I still thought it was very funny to see. After fixing this bug, we also went on and changed the falling entity to be items held by armor stands to better represent the power up you're going to get, as well as added three more power ups. Two of them being paddle related. One is a shrink paddle, one is a grow paddle. These are just from the base game that I knew of what Breaker Breaker was. And the third one that we added was multi-ball. So we added the ability to, when you grab this, two more balls would spawn off of yours and go in different directions. That way you had three balls in the game, giving you kind of more fun this way. I, I don't know. This just It's from the base game as I remember it, so that's why I added it. But there we go, we now have a working Brick Breaker game in Minecraft, using Minecraft as our game engine to render, do collision detection, all that fun stuff. It was fun to make, but one more fun thing that I'm sure you guys will love is that this is actually all on a server that all of you can go play. Thanks to our friends at Nodecraft who have hooked us up. This is going to be publicly available for you guys to jump on the server, play, play these games, see them as they come out. So right now the server is actually hosting Brick Breaker 
and actually is hosting the next game they've already made. So if you want to go play these, feel free to join them. IP is linked here, but it's also going to be down below in the description. Definitely check Notecraft out. Thank you for their support and helping make this possible. Again, I do plan to make more of these in the future. I do plan to make more games. As I said, I've already made the next one, so uh, stay tuned for that. But hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed watching this and enjoy the game. I'll see you guys all next time. Peace out.